Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of Numbers. Hello and good morning, faithful listener. This is Jen with the Bible Explained podcast, and we are in Numbers chapter 15 today, verses 22 through 31. And while you're grabbing your Bible to turn to those passages, if you're reading along with me, I'll tell you a story. (laughs) My internet is horrible again. And apparently last week it was good. It got fixed and apparently it was only fixed for a week. But that's okay. I'm learning to deal with it. I'm learning that I just have to go to my church to upload my episodes. And that's probably going to be uh, for quite some time until we're either able to get um, better internet out here or get satellite internet. I don't know. We're not able to do any of that stuff yet because of where I live. But that's okay. I'm learning to work through it (laughs) without becoming angry instead of screaming at my computer when it doesn't load. (laughs) All right, so let's go ahead and talk about Numbers 15, verses 22 through 31. Grab your Bible, your cup of coffee, or your cup of tea, and let's jump right in. When you err and don't observe all these commandments which Yahweh has spoken to Moses, even all that Yahweh has commanded you by Moses, from the day that Yahweh gave commandment and onward throughout your generations, then it shall be, if it was done unwittingly, without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bull for a burnt offering, for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh, with its meal offering and its drink offering, according to the ordinance, and one male goat for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and they shall be forgiven. For it was an error, and they have brought their offering, an offering made by fire to Yahweh, and their sin offering before Yahweh for their error. All the congregation of the children of Israel shall be forgiven, as well as the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. For with regard to all the people, it was done unwittingly. If a person sins unwittingly, then he shall offer a female goat a year old for a sin offering. The priest shall make atonement for the soul who errs when he sins unwittingly before Yahweh. He shall make atonement for him, and he shall be forgiven. You shall have one law for him who does anything unwittingly, for him who is native-born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger who lives as a foreigner among them. But the soul who does anything with a high hand, whether he is native-born or a foreigner, blasphemes Yahweh. That soul shall be cut off from his people." Because he has despised Yahweh's word and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be on him. So this is God speaking, Yahweh speaking to Moses to talk to the congregation of Israel. At this point in time, God pretty much only speaks to Moses to talk to the to the entire congregation because the congregation of Israel didn't really want to hear from God. So God spoke through Moses the one man that wanted to hear from God all through this time period, pretty much. So God speaks to Moses and tells the people that if they sin unwittingly, like say the entire congregation of Israel sins by doing something, but they don't do it purposefully. They're not like, ah, ha, 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 we're going to sin. They sin without realizing that they sinned. Or perhaps their intentions were quote unquote good and they didn't realize they were sinning or they didn't sin maliciously is kind of what this looks like to me. It was still a sin. No matter what the intentions were, it was still a sin. And God makes that very clear that even though you might have very good intentions, you can still sin and it's still considered a sin. And a sin the literal word for sin means to fall short. And I think we've we've abused the word sin over the years, but it literally means to miss the mark or to fall short. And so a person can obviously, while having very good intentions, miss the mark and fall short. <laughs> and that just happened to me on Sunday, actually. And I had to apologize to my husband because, uh, yeah. And, but the thing was, I had what I felt good intentions, uh, but... One way or the other, I snapped at my husband and that was not an appropriate response. And of course, I was (laughs) on the way home. I was arguing with him. I'm like, well, you did this and this and this. So I'm not apologizing to you. But it turned out after I 
cooled down and thought about it. And I was like, okay, probably not the best response I, I could have had in that moment. But anyway, yeah, so that was me having good intentions, but yet still responding in an incorrect way. Sinning. So absolutely, we can do that. We sin all the time. So, <laughs> and you know what else? I've heard people say like, oh, I hurt you, but you know, you can't be mad at me because I didn't do it maliciously. You know, I had no ill intention when I did that to you. So you can't get mad at me even though I hurt you in a certain way. And to that I say, yeah, well, you still hurt me or whoever else. So you shouldn't just make the excuse, oh, well, I didn't do it intentionally. I didn't do it maliciously. Well, it doesn't matter. You still hurt that person and reacted in a way that you shouldn't have reacted. So even though you don't do something maliciously or I don't do something maliciously, it doesn't necessarily mean we're not hurting somebody or that we are not sinning. So we should keep that in mind moving forward. But this is exactly what God is talking about here. The entire congregation can do something without realizing that they're sinning because they might be doing it with good intentions. And yes, I do agree that God does look at the heart and recognizes the fact that uh, we might have good intentions and are kind of hopeless at times for certain things. And yes, I, I think God has a lot of uh, grace when it comes to that kind of stuff. But even so, when we realize that we did something wrong, we need to confess it to God, whether or not we're like, oh, God, we didn't mean to do it like that. Or, you know, we had good intentions. It doesn't matter. God is showing us how we miss the mark, how we need a savior, how we need forgiveness, no matter what our intentions are. If we do something wrong, it's wrong. So I think that's what God is showing the people here is they don't have any excuse. They don't have an excuse to be like, well, we didn't mean to do it that way. It doesn't matter. They still sinned. And same for you and I. When we do something, even if it's with good intentions, if we do, if we still do something wrong, it's still considered to be wrong. And we need to go to the person that we hurt and say we're sorry, or we need to confess it to God. And this is just more of God teaching us how much we need a savior. We need a savior. So that I think is the biggest thing about this is preparing the people to recognize their need for a savior who happens to be Jesus. We just talked about that yesterday. So interesting how... Um, how the Old Testament and the New Testament just really line up. I just, I find that really cool. But anyway, it says here in verse 26 that the entire congregation of the children of Israel will be forgiven if they sin unwittingly, if they offer the bull for the burnt offering and also the meal offering and the drink offering according to the ordinance that God put in place. And also a male goat for a sin offering. So that's the thing about this. We see all these like sacrifices and stuff. But the fact is, was that one bull and a male goat was enough of a sin offering for the people to be forgiven. And we see throughout scripture, like these people bringing like tons and tons of animals to be sacrificed. But that wasn't the point of it. Blood had to be shed for sure. Because the wages of sin is death. We see that. That's, that's a theme throughout scripture. You sin, it equals death. But there isn't too often in scripture where God requires a ton of animal sacrifices for the people as well. This was all in moderation. But anyway, moving forward, it says if one person sins unwittingly, so one single person, not the entire congregation. So a person does something where they realize that they broke the law in some way or another, even if they did it unintentionally. They are still supposed to bring their sin offering, which was supposed to be a female goat a year old. So they were supposed to bring this goat to have it sacrificed so that they could be forgiven. And the cool thing is in verses 26 and through uh, 28, it actually says he shall be forgiven. The person who does this shall be forgiven if they go through the correct measures to try to rebuild that relationship with God through the priests and through all of that, they would be forgiven from their sins. And it wasn't just for the Israelites, which is the cool thing. Verse 29 here. This is the same for a stranger that lives as a foreigner among the Israelites. 
Remember where God said that uh, there was supposed to be one law for everybody? It's repeated again here in verse 29. You shall have one law for him who does anything unwittingly, whether he is native born or he is a stranger who lives as a foreigner. So there was one law, one law that was truth. That was God's law. So even though a foreigner lived in the area, that foreigner wasn't supposed to start bringing in his laws and his stuff and whatever else that he believed and try to integrate that into Israel. God was specifically saying that's not going to happen. There is one law that saves. It is my law. So any foreigner that lives in Israel must also follow my law. And this was also to prevent the Israelites from starting to follow other people's customs, other people's laws, and once again, turning away from God in that way. So God specifically says there is one law and that law is for the stranger as well as the Israelite. But then it talks about if a person, whether he's a native born or a foreigner, if he does anything with a high hand, what this means is if they purposefully go out and sin against God. Like literally they read the law and they're like, oh, it says here not to murder. Well, I'm going to go out and murder. <laughs> then that person is supposed to be cut off from his people. But actually murder is not a good uh, analogy for this because the murderer was supposed to be killed. Let's just say it was a sin that somebody decided to go out and do with a high hand. Let's just say um, mm, like doing like a ritual outside of the temple, out in the fields, God said that was wrong, or even doing something sexual that was public. All of these things were subject for that person to be literally cut off from the Israeli uh, nation. So they were supposed to be basically excommunicated and shunned if they did this stuff. This was to deter people from doing that kind of thing. Because once people start doing that kind of thing and realizing they can get away with it, more people join in. They continue to do it. And it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until God has to intervene in a way that uh, literally destroys the nation, which we see ends up happening later on. So in order to prevent that from happening, God was very clear that if somebody goes out with a high hand, in other words, they know what they're doing is wrong. They go out and do it anyway. They are supposed to be cut off and shunned. Now, I don't know if this was a permanent shunning because I know God gives a lot of grace. So I don't know if it's a permanent shunning or not. It could be, it might not be. But one way or the other, in order to get that person to repent, in other words, turn away from what they were doing, literally make a 180 degree turn in the opposite direction and no longer do what they used to do, then they had to be shunned. But it wasn't just for that person. It was for the entire congregation because that guy, that guy was kind of made an example of nobody wants to be shunned from their family and friends and church and whatever else. Nobody wants to do that. I understand shunning. It hurts. My entire family was shunned and it was awful. It's not a fun thing to go through. So being shunned is not fun. So if the congregation realizes, oh, that guy over there, he... He did that sin and now he's being shunned. Well, it's going to deter people from doing that particular sin when they see the consequences of that sin. That's what this is. Consequences for actions. So, yes, I mean, all sins have consequences for them. But the thing is about this high handed kind of sin this is actually a defiance against God. It's not just intentional sinning, but it's intentional sinning to the point of literally blaspheming God and saying, I'm going to do this, God, and I dare you to punish me. Like, too bad. This is happening. I'm going to do this. But the other thing is, we got to be super diligent about our churches. We got to be intentional that people are not coming in and spreading their crap in our churches. So if somebody's in the church and is like, oh, no, 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 you know, that's not a sin or this isn't a sin or whatever else is not a sin. When it specifically says in scripture that that thing is a sin, we shouldn't be applauding that person as being modern or being woke or being whatever else and wanting this person in our church because he looks he or she looks super cool and uh, are going to bring in a new type of person. No, 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 no. We're not supposed to be doing that because what they're teaching is wrong. 
We cannot be bringing that kind of stuff into our churches. The church is supposed to be set apart. It's supposed to be different. It's supposed to be holy. If we're acting exactly like the world acts and bringing in false teachers and applauding them for being false teachers, and we're acting exactly like the world is acting, why would anybody in the world want to come to church? They can just go do that stuff out in the world. So why would they want to come to church? They wouldn't. So that is why we're supposed to be very diligent and watching what is being taught in our churches, not applauding it, not uh, wanting to be more modern or have pop Christianity or pop Jesus or whatever else out there. We are supposed to be looking at the Bible, learning that and applying it to our lives. And that's it. So we got to be very careful what is in our churches. I find it so funny that like yesterday's episode and today's episode just go so well together. It could have been like a part one and part two. It's just so funny because like we talked about the book of Luke yesterday. And yet I was talking about uh, Christians need to be urgently following Jesus yesterday. So yeah, if you didn't listen to yesterday's episode, it's just funny how well it, it integrates into today's. So definitely go back and listen to yesterday's episode and see what you think. But you know what? I'm just really excited for everything that's going on with P40 Ministries and just so excited that you guys are tuning in with me every morning to read the scriptures. And I often like to read some reviews that you guys have left. I'm not going to read one today, but if you guys rate and review the podcast, Podcast. I might read it on air sometime. So definitely, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, share it, like it, review it, and let people know that the Bible Explained podcast exists. But friends and faithful listeners, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to talk too much longer. But I will tell you guys that I'm going to be having a guest on pretty soon. I'm excited for this particular guest. I'm very excited for him. And I think he's going to bring some good content. I haven't had a guest on in a while. I am sick of hearing myself speak. I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me speak too. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I will be having a guest on pretty soon. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Happy listening and God bless. Ooh.